This has been one of my longest projects so far. Because I failed, I almost failed twice. So let me get to the point. I've bought MacBook Pro 2017 for only $170. And here's the short story. As usually, I started my search from eBay and found this interesting lot. It was MacBook Pro 2017, 13 inches, non-touch bar version, and it costed only $170. The title was saying that it is listed for parts or not working. Short description was mentioning two problems. Battery was not working, and because of that, macOS was not possible to install. According to photos provided in the listing, the MacBook Pro looked pretty good, considering its low price. Once item was received, It was time to unbox it. What we got here? I can see that the Intel MacBook Pro which I ordered was shipped in a box from MacBook Pro M1 Silicon. Let me open the box and see what's inside. The parcel included MacBook Pro itself and pretty bad looking USB-C cable, no charger. Now I can see that the housing of the MacBook is covered with lots of small and deep scratches all over it. I also noticed a big dent on the top case near the keyboard. Luckily, screen looks pretty ok without any visible scratches. Unfortunately, hinges are loose on this MacBook, but this can still be fixed. Before trying to turn it on, I would like to give it a good clean. The MacBook wasn't starting without power source, so I hooked up USB-C adapter and USB-C cable, which I bought separately off eBay, and tried to turn it on. Great, it turned on and there is a flashing folder, informing that macOS need to be reinstalled. Next step will be to run online diagnostics test to check any hardware issues. After test was completed, I received the message that battery was not detected. There are two possible scenarios. First, it's just problem with the battery. Second, there can be an issue with the logic port. To test those scenarios, I need new replacement battery. While I was looking for it on eBay, I found that most new aftermarket batteries doesn't work at all according to buyer's feedbacks. So I decided to buy used original battery from a dead MacBook. I found this lot for a price of $60 and bought it. But once it was delivered, I saw that it was badly bent, so I wrote the seller and he refunded me the whole amount which I spent on it. Now I have a trackpad, keys and battery for free. Interesting if that will work at all. Having everything I needed, let me get into the fixing part. I will start with used replacement battery first. In order not to damage the trackpad, while removing the battery, I decided to disassemble it. After cleaning everything from dust, I proceed with replacing the battery. In order to remove adhesive tape from the bottom of the battery, I used plastic card and metal screen disassembler. 
but it wasn't that good idea, as this happened. F when I was using metal screen disassembler, I felt some strange smell from the battery. Looks like I cut some layer of the battery while I was removing the adhesive tape. But I decided to proceed and remove the whole battery. Once I inspected the battery, I saw that I have cut protection layer of the lithium battery in two places. Thankfully, I didn't cause a fire. After this fail, I need another replacement battery. So I went on eBay to get one. This time I bought new top case for $64.65. While the parcel was getting to my place, I decided to proceed with the second scenario and check if the MacBook logic board can cause battery issue. First, I will remove 6 screws from the bottom cover. In order to remove the bottom cover, I need to push each side of it opposite the hinges direction. Now I have full access to the logic board and can proceed with removing it. Once battery was disconnected, I unscrewed the right speaker and removed it. Next, I will unscrew metal plate from trackpad flex cable and disconnect the cable itself. Then I will remove another metal plate from fan flex cable and disconnect it together with keyboard flex cable. Now I can remove two metal plates which cover display flex cable and disconnect it as well. Next I will unscrew all the screws which holds the logic board. Now Wi-Fi antenna can be disconnected and left speaker can be removed. Finally the logic board can be gently removed from the housing. I had another project in progress and decided to test this motherboard in a different top case with a working battery. After properly placing the logic board, I proceed with assembling all the components together. Finally the MacBook is assembled and I can test the logic board. Great, the MacBook loaded from battery without power adapter. This means that logic board is working and all I need is new battery. After confirming that this logic board works without any issues, I can remove it. I got new delivery. This is my second top case with a used battery. It looks much better than the previous one. The battery has only 71 cycle counts. The keyboard looks great. Battery seems to be original. This time I decided that I don't want to remove the battery, but use this full top case with all components for my logic board. Let's try to connect the logic board and check if the battery works at all. The battery can be discharged. That's why I connected the power adapter. At first, it wasn't showing any picture, but the trackpad was working. So I tried to load into recovery mode. And it was a success. Now it is time to remove the screen module from the original top case. In order not to scratch the screen where the flex cable located, I covered this part with paper tape. First, I will remove hinges cover. Next, 12 screws which holds Wi-Fi antenna should be removed.
Once it is done, I can proceed removing all the screws which hold the main board of the screen. Now I can gently remove Wi-Fi antenna. The only thing left is to remove 6 screws which hold the hinges. 4 of them need to be removed first. And the two left should be removed once the laptop is opened to 100 degree angle. Now I can put my old screen module into the new top case. Next, I will place ScreenFlex cables into proper position and install Wi-Fi antenna. Finally, I will need to install all the screws to its original place. Screen module installation was successfully completed and I can test it. Nice! Now I need to assemble all the MacBook components together in order to finish this project. After removing paper tape from the screen, I proceed installing new macOS. Once macOS installation was successfully completed, I continue setting up the MacBook for the new user. I checked specifications page and found out that this is a base model of 13 inches MacBook Pro 2017. Luckily battery has the same cycle count number as was listed on eBay. As a final step I did some tests in order to check that everything works as expected. But unfortunately I found out that some of the keyboard keys were sticky. Most likely the keyboard keys were damaged with soda. After applying some alcohol for cleaning, it was perfectly working again. The same I did for 7 more keys. Finally it was time to remove all the stickers and do additional cleaning. And here's the final result. Now let me share the financial part of this project. The MacBook Pro costed $170. The first top case costed zero, as the seller returned me the whole amount of money. The second top case costed $65, shipping was around $25, so in total I spent 
I expect to sell this MacBook for around 400 up to 450 dollars, making a potential profit of 140 up to 190 dollars. If you like this video, smash that like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe button. And I see you in the next one.